Hey, I'm Dua Lipa and you're watching Bandwagon TV. Um, well, I was in Jamaica writing for my new album in January and I get a message from Calvin being like, hey, are you coming down to LA at any point? Um, do you want to work on something together? And I was like, oh, I've, I'm coming down for tour in February. Um, I would love to, to come down to the studio and we can work together. And bear in mind, every time I've done an interview and someone's been like, oh, who do you want to work with? I've always said Calvin Harris. So for me, I was super excited. And um, I, I went down to LA and I went to the studio and we started writing One Kiss. And um, that was pretty much it. Didn't really know what was going to happen with it, whether it was going to be a single, whether it was going to put it out, or, I, you know, it was just more like kind of getting into the studio and working on something together and waiting to find out. And he, I think he had just released his song with Party Next Door. And um, just get an email being like, oh, it's the next single. I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. I think every time you work with someone who you look up to and you admire their work, it's always quite like nerve wracking. He is like the friendliest guy ever and um, really lovely and down to earth and just super chill. And it, you know, sometimes when you go into a studio with someone, sometimes you're kind of terrified, or at least I am when I kind of go in and, you know, talk about my ideas or like what I want to write about because I'm like oh I don't know if he's gonna like my lyrics or like what I'm gonna say or um but yeah it, it, it just all it just all really ran really smoothly and it was super easy and he was so easy to talk to and he was so open to ideas and yeah he just he, it was great well I guess I'd just been traveling non-stop I wanted to be in one place I kind of just wanted to be in a warm place it was after just being in the cold and touring for so long and um, I'd heard about this studio in Jamaica and I was like oh that would just be perfect and I just want to go and spend some time and bring some co-writers out there that I love working with and just write and sometimes when you're far away from home and you're away from your comfort zone and kind of no one can kind of reach you it's kind of perfect because you just you just have time to just write and just be creative and it was it was really great. It actually rained the whole time we were there. The food was amazing, it rained, we got a couple of days of sun where we were like okay we can go to the beach for a bit but um, I actually got my best songs when it rained. Um, so I could have probably done that in London too. <laughs> can you feel the Um, not being afraid of my own thoughts. That was something that was a big, big factor in like the first album, where it was a lot about, oh, I don't know if I should write this, or, you know, I, I couldn't possibly be this honest about this because it's so personal to me, and I don't know if I want people to know this much about me, and I think it was really that kind of balance of, I guess, just putting my, my personal life out there for everyone to be able to hear just because, when I put Hotter Than Hell out and I had some people come up to me and be like, oh, this song made me feel really, really empowered or this song made me feel a certain way. Um, I realized that by being honest, I was able to get the best out of myself, but also was able to relate to my fans even more. And that was kind of like the, the, the wall that I was able to break through. It was like by writing something that was really honest and really therapeutic for me, um, I'm not just doing it for myself, but I'm also doing it for my fans. And it allowed me to, like I said, not be afraid of my thoughts and really just open up. And for this next album, it's just, it's really, I want to be as transparent as possible. I feel like for a while now I've, especially as like the songs got bigger and more people have gotten to know who I am, there is that kind of balance of private life and personal life and people wanting to know a lot, lot more about things that kind of go behind the music um, and I've been learning to, to find a balance but I think my balance is is that I want people to know about me the most only through my music if that makes sense mm -hmm. I want them to know I, it's kind of like 
I only want you to know about me through my lyrics. Yeah. Working with people that I've worked on the first album that I've become very close to that kind of know the whole backstory of the first album. And so it's kind of like the sequel. It's, it's just my life. And so um, it's just kind of like hanging out with your mates and just talking about really personal stuff. So, yeah. I have, and the first one I saw was by Jake Wilson. And um, I had so many people like email me it and tweet me it and text me it. And it was what I, I, I found, that was kind of like the first moment where I was like, oh, something really crazy is happening with this song and with this video. Um, I guess it was like the story behind it and like everybody was paying so much attention to the little details that we put into the video that I thought was just, really great and um i love the parodies i think they're all so great and inventive and different and exciting and it's so it, it's like you know when someone covers your song seeing parodies of your video is kind of even more surreal to a certain extent because i guess covering songs feels very normal and lots of people do it a lot but i haven't seen so many people kind of recreate music videos and um that was like a big pinch me moment for me. Talking in my sleep at night, making myself crazy. It did? Yeah, so I was just wondering. Can I see it? Yeah, Maybe yeah. I have seen it, but I, I can't. Okay, like, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I just. <laughs> Camera angles are good and the palm trees and everything. <laughs> I have seen this. I, I think maybe I saw it on Twitter or maybe maybe I got an email from I don't know that's funny because that's like the photo that a lot of national servicemen take after okay. they've kind of done <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> so you have seen it, actually. I think I've I've seen the introduction to it. I didn't see it all the way to the end, this one. Or maybe, I don't know, I'm a bit confused, but um, I, it feels familiar. Probably seen it. I just want to say thank you so much for the love and the support. And I feel so lucky to be here in one of my favorite places in the world, for sure, um, to, to get to come here and perform tonight. I'm, I'm over the moon and I would love to come back if you'll have me.